All right, I'm a little unstable, so I apologize ahead of time, but I have now put in all of my capacitors. I put the two here. Like I said, I'm going to avoid the doghouse ID. It looks like it's worked. So right here I've got these guys, and they're going underneath the pilot light and connecting to the grounding bus. This is the grounding bus that comes across here. I've got the other caps set up across there as well. I'll connect it to this grounding bus. I've grounded out my, my volume pots and the mid pot because I knew those needed to be grounded. I've also connected my uh, heater line down to the 200 ohms and the bias line over here to the bias circuit. It connects right here. Additionally, over here in the grounding area, I've grounded... Uh, let's see, I had to come a little further over, sorry. Right here, I've grounded both my center tap and my um, the Faraday cage on the transformer itself. The, that's the orange one. So, uh, I am now to the point really where about all that's left, I've got the power rail done, I've got the output transformers hooked up to, for the output, but they haven't got their uh, B plus or their positive or any of that kind of stuff, so I'll be running some wires, I think it comes from B if I remember right, we'll double check, but effectively your uh, high voltage comes in off of the, I think they come in right here actually, now that I think about it, and then that goes over to these guys. Then also I'll have a ground that comes off as well, but effectively uh, it's all about pretty much wiring up the tubes, and I think we're really close. Wiring the tubes and wiring into the uh, into the you know pots for the volume and for the different parts uh, as well. So uh, one of the things, the first thing I've done here is there's a feedback loop. So one of these guys will also send a feedback back into the circuit that is part of the um, this is the presence control. So the presence control connects in. Let's see, let me look at the map here. Looks like the presence control might connect in about here if I'm looking right. But anyway, presence control connects into there. There's a small capacitor on the presence control, but that comes from the negative feedback, which comes off of the uh, output transformer of the secondary here. Uh, that's just to uh, help. That reduces distortion. A decent amount of people actually don't like those, because especially in tube amps, you do want distortion. But we'll see how that works out. This will be my first time using negative feedback in an amp build. So, Alrighty. So, today's been a busy day. Got a lot done. I'm not quite there, but... Worked on it pretty heavily. So I've got all of my power tubes wired in. Uh, you know, they, they're coming in and connecting across. Uh, the blue ones are the output. So the output, one of the outputs come from here and the other one comes from there and goes over and hooks in to each tube. Um, then the power that comes off of each of these guys heads over. I also got the ground off of those, each of the black ones coming out. There's uh, a one ohm resistor on either side of that as well. There's still access into the, um, the this trim pot here for the bias adjust. I also, for short term, like I'd mentioned, I've, I've, I cut the 4 ohm and sealed it. I wired the 1 ohm and the ground across for these guys. And then I brought the negative feedback also back over into where it's supposed to come in here. And, um, but I also wired this in temporarily because, like I said, I'm going to pull a ground off as I'm going to test it. I want to test at 8 ohms just to make sure this sounds, uh, you know, what it sounds like in a regular speaker that I have here for testing. When I'm done, I'll obviously use these RCAs instead. But, and then I will also shrink wrap this, cut it pretty short, and just tuck it out of the way. Oh, my dogs are all excited about something. I think we have a visitor. Um, at any rate, I did start wiring up the first. I've got the first half of the preamp wired. I've got to do the second half of that one, and then these two are other preamps as well. And then I've got to run all the wiring to each of the remaining. Uh, the two volume treble mid base. I've already wired the um, what do you call it here? This is the presence. Uh, the uh, output of that came off of the other side of the where the feedback comes in, goes into this guy, uh, and then uh, through this this uh, cap right here, and then off to ground. So um, I will definitely finish up probably tomorrow doing the wiring of these guys and and of the, the all the pots. It's just a bunch of running of short wires between places like this and here and here or here and here. So it's definitely been a challenge for me having this so tight in here. Uh, you know, like there's just barely like less than a half of an inch between here and the wall. Burnt my finger once. Getting a soldering iron at these tight angles where I can still get things done and get behind them has definitely been ex exciting. Let's put it that way. But I'm getting a little better at that. But this is my first time being in such a tight chassis. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll learn as we go. So uh, I'll keep you posted uh, tomorrow on how the... Uh, remainder of the build goes, but uh, we're getting really close. So there you have it. Welcome everybody. Uh, we have the finished amp now. I'm going to try not to throw too much shadow here. This view here, you can see it all together. This is my grounding bus. You can see all the caps, filter caps through here and here. Uh, heater wires, and you saw those in before, but everything is now done. You can see the, the rectifier, power tubes. These are 6L6s and then the preamp tubes. 12AY7 and two 12AX7s. 
Uh, everything else turned out to me, you know, sounds pretty damn good. I'm pretty excited and impressed that it uh, is so fast and easy to put together compared to some of the other stuff I've done. And all props to that really go to Doug for doing such a great layout and great, easy to put together build. So, you know, I did the, the actual work here, but he's done so many hours ahead of time to prep this stuff. I really appreciate it. So, um, so I just wanted to give everybody kind of a, sh a view from the inside. Here was the, is the bias uh, potentiometer. And then you can hook in right here and right here because Doug also set it up where there are a pair of um, one ohm resistors to ground. I think those are these two here and here. That then means that you're getting a nice measurement in millivolts that is a very good approximation in milliamps of exactly what the plate current is. So you can then kind of adjust this very quickly as well. Um, and then you can see the bias uh, line coming across and connecting in down to here. That's this guy. If I remember, if I'm seeing it right, I don't know if that actually, that actually comes to about right here. I don't know if that's visible, but this blue line I was touching is actually what goes to the power tube. The second one comes over to this side. Then we also have the blue and the brown wires that come out of the power transformer as well. Uh, and then the output, as I'd mentioned before, you maybe can see this here. The output, I pulled out the little wire that I'd had just to test and removed it, and now we have some XLRs. I mean, sorry, these are not XLRs. These are RCAs. I put some little shrink wrap around them. I, I grounded them to the sides of them and then tested it all out to make sure I had good continuity. I've also tested by putting my hand against each speaker while I'm playing to make sure I could feel it. Everything looks good. I've got all the speakers firing and it sounds great. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to button this up, switch it around, and let everybody give it a, a listen. All right, hello everybody. Well, we've got the final playoff of this guy. Uh, right now, I'm first going to go in the normal channel and I've got the volume up to about half, so we'll listen to that. Here we go. just playing guitar into the bright channel. This is also about midway up. Hey Mallory, you wanna, Mallory, you coming to help out? So it's got some good meat there. Let's crank this guy up to max. tuning that I'm not used to. There's a decent amount of noise at max volume, but uh, yeah. Alright, so I'm going to take a quick switch over it. I'm going to plug into my um, effects and let you a little bit of hair reverb and whatnot in that. So we'll go to that next. All right, here we go. Put a little drive into it. gives you a little bit of a sound of this guy. It's a really, really cool sounding amp. I dig it. Um, you guys should definitely build one if you're thinking of it because I've had a lot of fun. Um, and I'm also going to take a quick second here to also apologize. It took us an extra couple weeks to get this video out. Both I and my wife got sick, so that really dragged us down and we're coming even a day or two late on our normal delivery of the first of the week. So 
Uh, appreciate you guys hanging in there with us, and keep your tubes biased hot, and keep the jams coming. Thanks, guys. If you like our stuff, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and uh, you know, give us some comments below. And I also have a Patreon page up, as I've mentioned before. If you've if you've got an extra fifty cents to a dollar to share or whatever, we'd appreciate it. These amp co these amps cost us money, so thanks. Have a good one.